We're here at the uh, Thomas Townsend House on 3rd Street in the Point section of Newport. Manning the cameras and the audio is uh, my neighbor Ned Sherman of 11 3rd Street. And uh, with us also is uh, the gracious Mrs. Uh, Bowl House of the Newport Historical Society, who's a longtime resident of Newport and reigning expert on the Point, and particularly this neighborhood on Lower 3rd Street. Mrs. Bowl House, perhaps we could been, begin with what we were chatting about a while ago which are the various towns and houses that lie along, along Bridge Street. Well, of course, as I was just thought then, Christopher's house, of course, is still standing. Job's that was at this corner is gone. This corner of, of, of uh, bridge, Third and Bridge. Third and Bridge the is north, gone. The northwest corner of Third yes, and Bridge. Yes, northwest corner. And just west of him was the house that belonged to Edmund Townsend. Edmund Townsend. Would that be now right across from the rum line? Right, just across from the rum and line. that house is gone. Yeah. And there was, a, a, I think, a shop connected with that. Then way at the corner, where there is the garden now. Matt Norris's garden. Matt Norris's that garden was a big bridge. colonial house that was a John Townsend house. Mm -hmm. And across the street on the opposite corner, on the east corner of Second and Bridge, was John Townsend's shop. Right. And it went down to, I think, the third generation as a, as a cabinet maker's shop. And then on the next corner, west of that, was Christopher Townsend's, right. which is still there with his little shop. What happened to the, the shop that was uh, John Townsend's shop? Well, about, I guess it's about 10 years or so ago now. Um, but they got permission to tear it down because they couldn't prove that there was anything left of the 18th century plan. And Mrs. Dame took it down and added what she added on in the corner there. Right. Well, the house, that, the main house of Mrs. Dame. Main Dane's house is very old, but that wasn't the Townsend house. I see. That's a very old house. Right. But, and Mrs. Dame had restored that. But then this other was... Uh, well, in my day, it was always had a shop down below, a grocery shop. Yeah. Yeah. It was, the, look, there was nothing, and the uh, architects could find nothing left. Mm. And of course, when John Townsend, which would be the next generation, when they were settling up his estate, it says in the Mercury that that place mm. is for sale and can be moved. So we don't know if that was the same building there or not. It might have been moved. It might have been moved. Now the Christopher Townsend house uh, is an original house. It has the, the shop next to it. It has the uh, shop next to it. Yeah, yeah, Bridge Street. yeah. Well, of course, that now belongs to Mrs. Goddard, mm -hmm. and has been for some years belongs to Mrs. Goddard. And then, um, as far as I know, there hasn't been too much change in that house. Yep. I don't know what they've done on the interior. But the exterior of it. I get a little lost that there's so many towns as to who the cabinet makers were and uh, well, you see, the others. For we, example, the Job Townsend was the so sort of the senior cabinet maker and he, he had two sons, Thomas and John. He had Christopher. See, Job and Christopher were brothers, I Job think. Job and Christopher were brothers. Brothers. And then Job had um, Job had Edmund and John. I don't want to be too specific about and this Thomas. and Thomas, but I think Thomas was not a cabinet maker. He had another, he had an inn or something. Well, was but this it's a, all the same family. Was this a brother of? Would be a brother of, um, of uh, would be a son of Job's. Of Job. But, but not in the same profession, is what I'm trying what to I say. What I was reading in the, uh, Newport historical uh, material was that the two cap or perhaps it was in the uh, Green Light, an article by Lincoln mm -hmm. Peterson, uh, that Job had two sons that were also in the cabinet making business, were Thomas and John, and that Christopher mm -hmm. was a ship's cabinet maker. No, ship Christopher made furniture in his mm -hmm. in his inventory. He leaves furniture, and he also had a son who died young that he tells about a clock that the son made the case for, uh, but the son had died young. But you see, all the Goddards and Townsends intermarried, so it's very hard to, to say which one did, did which. Mm -hmm. 
John Goddard, who was, uh, we really think, perhaps the best of them all, um, he was apprenticed to the first Job, and he married Job's daughter. A brother of his was also apprenticed and married another daughter of Job. They were all, they were all intermarried. Right. They all used the same tools. So it's very hard to say definitely that one man made something because mm -hmm. maybe four or five of them worked, worked together on, in the yeah. shop. They worked in the shops together. Now there's also a Solomon Townsend house. Yeah, in Solomon Townsend, but Solomon was a sea captain. A sea captain. Yeah, and he also owned house now gone that was on next to the Methodist Church. It was a colonial house. He owned that house at one period, too. Now, there's another uh, house at 53 Bridge Street, the blue house down here uh, at the corner. Uh, yeah. And that is, uh, has a sign on it saying uh, Thomas Towns in 1725 or something like that. Would that, uh, how would that Thomas Townsend relate to the Thomas Townsend here in 1767. I I'd have to look it up. I mm -hmm. couldn't be sure. I'm not, I don't believe it's the same one, but it could have been. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could have he could have built this one after he built that one. I know up in the beams, up in there's a there was a little place in the middle of the third floor. Mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of boxed in when I was here, right? Right. and you could go up and back, and you could see the big beams. And the date of 1767 was on one of those beams uh, up in, in the third the attic in, of this house. In the attic of this house. And not, and of course, just like you might yourself, not necessarily if they built it, did they always. They could have built it for, for renting as well as, mm -hmm. as to live in, you know? Right. Well, Eileen uh, Peterson uh, wrote in the uh, Green Light that there were only, she thought at the time, uh, three towns and houses left on the original sites, which were the Christopher Townsend House, uh, this house, and the Thomas Townsend House at the corner of... But I don't think that Solomon Townsend one has ever been moved, to my knowledge. Well, she used the phrase, I think, cabinet making. Well, yes, of that course, would that, 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 that would be the He was not a cabinet maker, but he right. was part of the family. No, he he, he was a sea captain. I had seen references in uh, in some of the account books. He mm -hmm. was definitely a sea captain. How about the, uh, uh, I think I've heard on occasion some of the uses of these houses, uh, for example, the uh, house at 53 Bridge. Uh, that it used to be a store, and I've heard a rumor that it might have been a speakeasy. <laughs> well, we had plenty of those during Prohibition days, but my recollection of it, it was a barber shop. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, the rude girly girl over here, her father had a barber shop there for years. She could From tell Elm you Street. about it. Huh? From uh, Elm Street. Elm Street, yes. They, she still lives in the father's house. And uh, the, um, there's quite a family of them. At one time, I, I I don't know if there's any left besides herself or not. But the corner, the the shop was this way, so that the the doorway was like the triangle of the corner cut off. Mm -hmm. And it was a barber shop for years. Of course, over where the print shop is now, was um, a grocery store always. When the I third was third Elm Press. The third the Elm Press store. was a grocery store when I was a child. And then up at the next corner, there was also a grocery store. And of course, Bridge Street had any number of grocery stores. And rather, this, as I say, this painting, that, this picture that you have, there was a grocery store in that house at that time. At the corner. At the corner, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and you also said that in those days, uh, the electricity was just coming in. Oh, yes. We lived in the house on the corner of uh, third and elm from the time i was nine till i was well in my 20s before we came down here there was no electricity and that was on the northwest corner northwest corner the one that they've just made that big addition right in, in across the, the street from the elm yes right across from it mm -hmm. yeah. and of course the one the one somebody's just been doing on the other corner 
was built just before First World War, just for a rooming house. Mm -hmm. the, you see, a lot of the Navy men at that time liked to have a place to come ashore and, and change into civilian clothes. So I, they came to me a while back when they were doing it over. I don't know that it even had a kitchen in it. It was just built for, for rooming. Mm -hmm. And the person who owned it lived up Elm Street, and I wouldn't know the number now, just above the corner, just above the east corner of Elm and Second, uh, Elm and Third, um, and just just took care of the rooms. It was just built really to rent because, um, as I say, when they came ashore, they liked to have a place to mm -hmm. take off the uniform, put on civilian clothes. Well, a number of these houses have been moved over the years. I recently saw an old picture of the moving of the Pitt's Head Tavern. Yeah. Which Look. was in Washington Square, or? It was on Charles on Street, Charles Street. Um, right in back of what I call the Odd Fellows Hall. You know, the, <laughs> you know the... That could apply to a lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, the, brick, the, the brick building on the square, where now they have a pastry shop downstairs right. and so forth, was in my day always referred to as the Oddfellas Hall because they owned it and had a big meeting room up above and and the, then the downstairs was a drugstore. And just just in back of that, just going north, was the Pitts Head Tavern. Right. But it originally sat on the square and was moved that far back. Then, then oh, I don't know how long ago it was now, time goes so, one of the, uh, when John and Nicholas Brown's son moved it and uh, took it over to Bridge Street. Mm -hmm. And then the Ramos took over and finished the restoration right. of it. And the uh, house that uh, Nat Norris has, uh, that was down on, line. Yeah, that was way down where the Clark Cook House is. Down, down in the that. parking lot of the mooring? No, it was, up on, it, was up, it was up on Thames Street. But on Thames. It stood on Thames Street, but right where, What's that one that they call something with a candy name to it? Uh, candy store, Clark Cookhouse. Exactly, yes, that. Well, it was right there, maybe just a little uh, south of it or something, right in mm -hmm. that section, and he moved it over here and restarted. That must have been fascinating with all, taking all the power lines down. Well, and, well I know when they, when the John uh, Nicholas Brown's son just moved that one, which really just went from Charles Street, Pitsett. yeah, Pitsett I'm talking about, went from Charles Street down Marlboro around the ballpark and down there, and it cost him at that time over, over 10,000 just for wire, wires, yeah. telephone wires and things being taken down. Yeah, and that was what, 40 years ago, 30 yeah. years ago? Or? At least, yeah, because yeah. the Ramos have had it for years. How about the Goddard houses? Well, the, 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 the the one there was a guarded house, as I say, up on on uh, Second Street now, but it was moved. It was on. It sat on Washington Street, where the Coval House is. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the Mrs. Uh, hmm, I forgot her name, woman who wanted to build who built the Coval House, moved it and the house next to it off, because you see he was right on the shore, and they they used to send. Uh, furnitures mm -hmm. to the south and so forth, right right from the shore there. But they moved it over, it's over on 2nd Street on the uh, east side. Mm -hmm. Perhaps uh, you could tell us a little bit about the restoration effort here in the Point section in Newport generally. My knowledge it only goes back to the late 1960s, but I know the effort started before that. Well, I am not too sure of dates these days, but uh, Operation Clabboard started with the idea that many houses on the point were practically going to pieces and they were the poorest kind of tenement houses up Washington Street and so forth. So um, a group got together, because the Preservation Society actually started in 1946, and they started because the Hunter House was going to have the whole panel and torn out of it and sent away, and they formed a group which they called the Georgian Society. This was before the Preservation Society, and got money enough to buy the Hunter House, which was their first thing. So it was some time after that that Operation Crabboard 
decided, and they got a group raised a small sum of money, and they would buy up these places and hold them until they get, could get someone to say they would restore it. And uh, then they'd take the money that they got from selling that one and put it into another one. Right. And uh, so that was really the beginnings of what you call a more or less of a mass renovation. Before that, people had done a few here and there, but that was, that was really the start of And then, of course, then when Doris Duke decided to make her foundation operation, Crabwood went, went, out, of, went out of business. Right. And in fact, replaced by the Newport Restoration Foundation. Yes, yeah, the Newport Restoration Foundation is strictly a Doris Duke Foundation. Right. Did perhaps, what, uh, 90 homes or something? Uh, 84 at least, 84. maybe more. And she took them and uh, moved some. Some of them she brought here from other places. Yeah, I can see three of them right out the window. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so she moved some. She um, she did a great thing for Newport, I Well, oh, I think she did, indeed. Because, of course, at the beginnings, People, some of the people who had lived in some of those places on Washington Street and all were pretty upset, but they were going to fall down if they didn't. They right. were, but she's, she's done a great deal for Newport. Well, there was a Dr. Uh, Etlinger. Yeah, he was, he was the librarian at John Carter Brown Library at Brown University. And he did this one that we were in. He did the, the little watchmaker shop next door. Mm -hmm. And also the house. Twelve Third Street. Yeah, and the house that's just above the the press. I don't know the number. Just past the uh, Third Mill Press. Yeah, just yeah, just <coughs> on, on the east side. Of in the east street. side, just above it. Yeah, just north of it. He did those, uh, um, as far as I know, on his own. Yeah, that was in the nineteen sixties. Yeah. And I think that's one of the earliest done that, that I know of mm -hmm. on the point. Well, well, of course, the one I, uh, the when they moved the the Pitts Head Tavern, that was strictly done by one person, right. and it wasn't so much a question of well, he restored it, but he he also moved it from the position where it was, and brought it over there. Mm -hmm. Well, in the case of this house, I think uh, my understanding is that uh, Doctor uh, Atlinger, in effect. Uh, removed all sorts of... Uh, he took all kinds of appendages off. Mm -hmm. it was restored a, to its original... So he restored it to what he thought was the original house, mm -hmm. the original plan, uh, which would have been... Uh, well, it, in my day, it had two rooms here. I mean, just this main part of the house would have had two rooms here, two rooms up above it, and that... that small room that you use for study or something was right. where, where the, the second floor. Yeah, that, that was our dining room. But then the house extended all the way into the, the back. There was yard a big L went way in the back there, yes. And there were porches off the south end. There was of the a house. porch, an uh, open porch on this lower floor and a glass gin porch on the second floor. But and this, the, this room here, this room here on the lower the floor went, went out level with the porch mm -hmm. so that that room would have been farther over to the, right. to the south, I guess. You mentioned when you came in about the staircase. Yeah, so the staircase is, is uh, definitely made by one of the Townsends, but I, I can't say which one. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely... Well, as, as you suggested, they interchanged a great deal. Well, they, they all work together and and the younger ones worked as apprentice mm -hmm. for the old, you know, for the first first job. Uh, as I say, John Goddard was his apprentice. Then he married one of Job's daughters. Right. And uh, so they all work, worked together. They all used the same tools and so forth. So it's very hard to say that a certain piece was just made by one man. Mm -hmm. The only way you can do that is if you have a bill of sale. And there are some pieces. You specifically identify the piece by the yeah. bill of sale. Yeah. Because um, 
we have some at the historical society some account books of the Townsends, but there's more coffins in them than there are cap. <laughs> <laughs> but we do know that uh, you take some of the now, like Aaron Lopez, the big Jewish merchant, in his account books you have where he's sending he's he's sending furniture that the goddess and Townsends have made, sending it down the south in different places. So they. They ship things out. Well, they, they ship them out themselves, but they also the other merchants would ship them out too. Right. They might do it on consignment. On yeah, like a consignment, yeah. Mm -hmm. You also uh, said that you uh, lived up here at the corner of Third uh, and Elm. Do you live in any other parts of the Point? Yes, I I, I was I was born on the top of Thames Street, on the east side. And what is now a was an operation crabwood house, I guess. Yeah. And um, then we moved to, to Bridge Street. Will that be near uh, Bucci's liquor store? Or? Uh, well, not, it's on the opposite side of the street, and just uh, just a little farther south. Um, there's this very small house. There's the park, and then there's a small right. house, and then the next house. Right. And then. Uh, then later we lived on Bridge Street, at the upper part of Bridge Street. The house is still standing. Over near Cross Street? Almost, but on the opposite side, on the uh, south side of the street. And then um, we lived at 59 Poplar, mm -hmm. which is a house that's since recently been restored. You know, it's just next to St. John's uh, Parish House. Right. We lived there until I was nine. And then we moved to the house on the corner of Third and Elm. And, and from there to here, from to, get, there to, there to, here. here to get the electricity. Yes, to get electricity. The electricity had just come in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that was something when you had electricity. And I told you my first radio, but um, that, was the f that was the first radio we had, little RCA. Right, and the first house with electricity in the bathtub. When that, did that, all the plumbing move indoors? The plumbing all came in about 1909. That is, I don't, they had to put it in. The city compelled them to put it in, in, in about 1909. And they, they were gone. But <laughs> we had them before that. Yes, we did. Well, this has been a delightful recollection of your many years here in Newport. I'm certainly very appreciative, as is uh, Ned Sherman, that you've partaken of all your knowledge of this subject, and hopefully we can continue on and do some more of this some other time. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Well, it's fascinating to see all Mr. Sherman's equipment. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Cecil B. DeSherman. Thank you very much, Cecil. Uh.